Welcome to module one. And so one of the first things that we'll be looking at in module one is what's in your medicine making tool chest. So this short video is gonna highlight some of the, some of the uh, tools as part of your medicine chest. So first off is some, some utensils. And some of, of course, you'll need some sharp knives. A regular kitchen knife and a cleaver. Really great tool to work through some beeswax or other hard substances. Next off, for utensils we have spoons. We've got a regular spoon and a stainless, I mean both stainless, a slotted spoon. So something to note here is stainless is always a good thing to use because you know it doesn't uh, hold germs or anything like that. It's easy to clean. Next up is a tea strainer. Always great to have. Also, I, I, I like a, a big strainer as well, so you can strain, strain larger materials. One of my favorite tools are chopsticks. Great little stirring tools and, and great to manipulate with. So, Also, you might need funnels. Here's a wide mouth hunt, uh, canning funnel, which is great for, for larger herbs when you're putting them in, in, in jars and whatnot. And just a regular uh, funnel. I like an assortment from small to large depending on your bottle size. Another helpful tool might be a grater. A grater is great for processing herbs and also beeswax. Some people like to have their own grater for grating beeswax when they make salves and creams. The next category we'll be looking at is measuring, measuring devices. So we've got uh, these graduated cylinders that measure, you know, typically in a milliliter volume, and and then we have your kind of traditional, traditional measuring cups, which have both milliliters and ounces. So the next critical part of your medicine making toolkit are things to heat in. So heating implements, just a standard pot, uh, as well as kettle to kettle to heat water or other you know they, they make electric heating implements as well one thing about the pot so one thing you might need in the medicine kit is a double boiler and double boilers work great for heating oils and so if you don't have a double boiler you can use a simple trick by taking one of these heat resistant measuring cups uh, and, and putting putting water in your pot and then adding and then putting it on the side and you can actually make your own little double boiler okay Next up are kind of the small appliance category of things that you might need. Um, these aren't required. You can use a mortar and pestle as well, but I have an herb grinder. And so an herb grinder, it works excellent for breaking down the, the really hard, tough, woody herbs. So we're talking about roots, seeds, barks, etc. So this is your, your herb grinder. And you, if you look at this one, it says, for spices, so I only use this one for spices versus for coffee, because coffee, the, the coffee taste really kind of sticks into the into the grinder, and that will impart into your herbs. The next little appliance is uh, an immersion blender, otherwise known as a hand blender. And so this is just instead of using a regular blender, I use this for most things. I use a jar and a hand blender. And so this has multiple speeds and it's great for making creams, which we'll talk about later. The next important part of your medicine making kit is, is jars. So these are just, you know, basic mason jars. And, and as you're starting out, this is a eight ounce and this is a pint. And these are a great, great start out sizes. Uh, when you're just starting to make medicine, you're making small amounts. As you get more into it, or if you want to make more, you can get larger jars like a, um, a 32 ounce quart and or half gallons as you move up. Lastly, we have two kind of things that are important. One is something to strain with. So we talked about a little strainer early for tea, but also straining out your herbs. This is a muslin cloth. And muslin cloths are great for just um, keeping particulate out. So if you're straining oils or teas or any type of uh, tincture, I use muslin cloths to to strain out. And this is a finer weave than a cheesecloth. I don't ever use cheesecloths because I find them to be too porous. And the last thing on your list is labels. So this is just a kind of something you get at an office store and it's a sheet of, of sticky labels. You can also use paper and tape, but la labeling is critical for your work 
uh, in your medicine chest. So, and we'll talk about specifics about what goes on the la label a little bit later. And so, uh, this is kind of the end of your video on what should be in your medicine making tool chest. And I leave you with asking the question of what do you think should be in your medicine making?